I was in high school and there were some high school missions trips that RMC was doing and I tried to go on one and God closed the door and then um, they had a trip to Chihuahua, Mexico and he opened the door for me to go down there and I was like, cool, like this can be a really awesome experience, like a 10 day trip, did not have anything, any kind of expectations at all. And um, when I was on that trip, all of the, the, the leaders who went down at some point, like separately came to me and were like, we really see God calling you to the mission field. You should pray about this. And I was like, what? Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got home, I, I just really began to pray about it and seek counsel and like really look into, you know, how does it even look, look like being a missionary? Like, I don't know anything mm. about that. Um, and I was going into my last year of high school, so I was also looking into college opportunities and, you know, is this mm. something that I should do further down the road or, yeah, so just a lot of a lot of prayer. Um, and every time I tried to walk away from it, the Lord just brought me right <laughs> back to it because he was like, Caroline, like I made it very clear to you, like, why are you walking away from this just because you don't understand it? Um, and so I ended up going back down a year later to Mexico again and it was on that trip that the Lord just really confirmed to me um, that that was his will for my life. Was, um, And so when I got back from that trip, I just really began to pray about, okay, God, where and in what way? Because um, you can be involved in missions in a lot of different ways. Um, and does that mean that I should be going to another country? Does that mean, you know, being a missionary, but focusing on like the States or, um, you know, so Lord, where, where do you want me kind of thing? And mm. he, as I prayed about it, um, he put two places on my heart. Um, the first one was Chihuahua, Mexico. It was very specific. Um, and then the second one was Peru. It wasn't anywhere in Peru. It was just Peru. <laughs> Which was really weird to me because I didn't have any connection to Peru at the time. I was like, okay, like, there weren't even missionaries from RMC in Peru at this time. So I was just like, all okay. right, well, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where I started my journey of um, becoming a missionary. Because pretty soon after that, I talked to Dan Johnson and started interning at the church. And from there, went down to Mexico and stuff. So hmm. yeah, that's kind of a how I got started. <laughs> Very nice. Well, for me, I was raised in a, a Christian home, you know, and I grew up hearing about missions because my grandma was a missionary in the Ukraine and all over Africa. And, and so we would always hear about that. And I always thought it was really cool. But then just because of different reasons, like whether it's people telling me missionaries can't be financially stable and you want to have a family and a job and kids and all those things. I just never pursued it and never really pursued the Lord until um, a couple of years ago. I was going to a Bible study with some friends of ours. Um, one of them was Luke Bisher, and he would just go to all these different places after he got back from another one. He would come to our Bible study and tell us about Uganda and the Czech Republic and Peru and Mexico and all these places. And then every time it would just be, it would be so cool to hear about these places. And um, none of them really spoke to me. It was always this cool thing that Luke was doing. But then when he came back from Peru, he was there for a month. Um, for whatever reason, it just stirred a fire in my heart in a new way, just hearing him talk about it, hearing about the needs that the people have, even though, you know, the mission is more or less the exact same anywhere you go. Yeah. Hearing about Peru was something different. Um, so after that, I, um, just started getting more involved in this group and we became this tight group of, of friends with all like sort of missionally minded more, some more than others sort of thing. And, um, Luke was a missionary in Chihuahua, Mexico for two years and one like around Christmas of 2017, he invited us, um, to go with a trip down there to see where he was at because we're his friends and he wanted to show us where he had been for the past two years sort of thing. Um, and so I went with them and he was there and his brother and me and Caroline and a bunch of just our little group of friends went and it was on that trip, like the very first day, um, 
the Lord has really clearly put on my heart that all the other things I've been trying to do, whether it was construction or college or firefighting, any of those other things I was trying to pursue, none of them were what he had for my life. Because during all of those times, I just was doing what I thought was best or what I people told me I would be good at or, you know, what would make the most money, what would be what would help other people even with like firefighting. I never once was like, Lord, what do you want? And on this trip, that was the first time I really asked that question and really asked him, Lord, what do you have for my life? And it was in that moment he was like, this is what I have for your life. Missions, hmm. going to the world, proclaiming the gospel. Second Timothy 4, 1 through 5, um, basically just talks about being strong in your, in your convictions because the world will come to a place where people don't care about truth, people don't care about doctrine, people don't care about um, what the word of God says, and they'll create teachers and create doctrines according to their, their own will and according to what they desire and, and all those things, which is exact, exactly where we see the world at now and how us as Christians need to um, be sober-minded in all things. We need to exhort and um, encourage the world and encourage one another and, and stand firm in what the Lord has called us to. And the end of it ends with fulfill your ministry sort mm-hmm. of thing, which always just speaks to me. And I think another one that just really defines both of us, I'd say, is um, Matthew six thirty three, where it says, mm-hmm. seek first the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Yeah. Yeah. And that it starts in your own walk with the Lord. And then that just overflows in into so, the lives of the people around you. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to do the Lord's work in these places. We're going to share the gospel, which has such an incredible impact and it's such an incredible thing like get excited like yeah. when you're support raising get excited because <laughs> you're doing this incredible thing mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i definitely think it is hard to keep that mentality sometimes it's not just about the support raising like mm-hmm. for me i've learned like you have like you look at it as building relationships with people because that's what you want you want to build their ministry partners they're not just a check you know and mm-hmm. so um that just makes it so much more worthwhile because then not only are you finding people to come behind you financially, but they're excited about the actual ministry and they want to be involved Mm -hmm. um, in whatever ways they can and they're faithful. And I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful relationship. A lot of my challenges were more or less the same. A lot of just, it's hard to find people excited about what God is doing in your life. And I think a lot of people don't really fully grasp what being a supporter really means Mm -hmm. because um, like there's goers and there's senders and yeah. we're goers, but the senders are just as important. You know, I mm-hmm. think about it a lot of times is, um, we might be like the hands and feet, but the senders are the heart pumping the blood into the ministry. You know, without mm-hmm. them, we would die without them. We can't work without mm-hmm. them. We can't do the ministry. And, and we were actually talking about this recently. We were looking in acts to, to see about how, when the church first sent out, first sent out the missionaries, how they did it. And, um, and it was the church as a whole, it was the, the body as a whole saying, well, these people need Christ, who can we send? Mm-hmm. And then the people were just raised up. Oh, let's send um, Paul and Barnabas. It wasn't Paul and Barnabas coming to the church and saying, hey, we're going to go to this place. Do you guys want to support us to mm-hmm. do that? You know, yeah. the people were behind them from the very beginning. And that's really one of the, the hardest challenges is to find people whose hearts are stirred towards what God is stirring your heart towards. I really struggled with depression on the field. Um, it's a very, very real thing. Uh, just in, I think a huge part of it, for me, a huge part of it was spiritual. Um, I think part of it was like physical stuff going on. Um, but dealing with that in another country by yourself is really hard. I think some of my biggest struggles were just myself, you know, like my, my sin nature coming out in so many different ways, whether Mm -hmm. it was laziness or whether it was insecurities or pride or any of those things that like, I didn't even realize were issues when I was in the States until I went out onto the field. They didn't, they never surface, you know, like before I went to Mexico, I was the guy who was working all the time and preparing to be a missionary and also leading Bible studies and at church and, you know, doing all these things. And 
I didn't realize there was any pride in that. Mm. You know, and then I went out on the field and it was, well, I can't even communicate the gospel to, to anyone because I don't know the language. I can't even communicate the basics. Yeah. So who even am I if I can't like show people how cool my theology is, you know? <laughs> and, and so there was all those hurdles of just getting over my myself and letting the Lord really do the work that he had. Yeah. You know, and once I stepped aside is when he really started to do a lot of the cool things that happened when we were on the field, a lot of the mm -hmm. teaching Bible studies in another language, learning another language, all those things only happened once, once I stepped aside and was like, all right, Lord, you can really have all of my life mm -hmm. now, you know? Another big hurdle that I had to jump over was finances, not in the sense of raising the support, but in the sense of being a 22 year old with a high paying job, you know, I never, I never realized how dependent on my finances I was until I started to, to mm. become a missionary and started to head down that path because there was like a six month period where the Lord asked me to leave my job. And so I did, you know, I took that step of faith, but then it wasn't six months later until I actually went out on the field. So there was like a six month period of just my bank account slowly shrinking to nothing <laughs> because I had to learn like the Lord is in control of, of all of that. Matthew 28 says, Jesus gave the command to the disciples to go to all the nations, making disciples of all nations sort of thing, um, which is no nothing to be taken lightly, nothing like, there's nothing small about that. That is a call that we all have to go where we are to go to other places and to, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, you know, and to make people into disciples. But I think for us more specifically, why are we missionaries? Um, is a good question. <laughs> God calls all of us to participate in the Great Commission in some form or fashion. And his is, to us is living in another country and reaching a specific people group. But you know, it can look different to every, each person, you know, like there's some people who are called to making disciples of their, their neighbors, or like even just being in America, there's so many nations here in America that we have access to, that we have the yeah. opportunity to share the gospel mm -hmm. with here. I think at the end of the day, why we're missionaries is because we read the word and decided to follow it. Mm -hmm. You know, like we read where it says, go and do this so we're going and we're doing this you know at the end of the day it's just obedience to god's word mm -hmm. any number like you can pick a handful of scriptures and at least one of them will tell you to go out and teach people the word you know there's mm -hmm. there's no getting around it there's no getting away from it it's not just that one section in matthew it's the whole bible is yeah. the story of we were in relationship with our creator we sinned and right from the get-go, he created a plan to bring us back into relationship with him. And now we get to help our fellow man come to that realization that we walked away from our creator. We need a savior to bring us back into relationship with him. So here's how you do it. That's, you know, you can't get around that if you read the Bible. <laughs>